I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. In this video, we aim to recreate Eliza, the first ever psychotherapist chatbot, but with improved capabilities. Eliza was one of the first AI programs that came close to passing the famous Turing test. And even its creator was surprised when users began sharing their inner thoughts and feelings with this simple computer program. In our previous videos, available at AIfordevs.com, we've demonstrated how this was achieved using just a few lines of code. Hello, I'm Eliza. What's on your mind? I'm feeling angry. How long have you been feeling angry? But in this video, Hello, I'll show you how you today? can build your own virtual psychologist using modern technologies like here. GPT and real-time text-to-speech services like DeepGram. And that's not all. We'll create a therapy agent with Autogen that will never forget any previous therapy sessions. You'll also learn how to equip Eliza with both short and long-term memory so that it doesn't forget what has already been said. Why is memory so important? Even the Jarvis implementation from our popular video was stateless. This means Jarvis was not capable of learning new things or remembering facts already shared. Do you remember my name? Sorry, I can't remember anything. For a psychologist AI, this limitation would be problematic because the conversation builds on everything that has already been said. Therefore, you'll learn the basics of how to store the complete conversation and use it with language models. But before we dive in, let's start at the beginning of AI chatbots and travel back almost 60 years. The history of AI chatbots actually dates back to 1950. The British computer science pioneer, Alan Turing, pondered the thinking abilities of computers as a teenager. He developed a simple test, the Turing test. Imagine you are texting with two mysterious chat partners. One chat participant is an AI, while the other is a real human. If you cannot distinguish the AI from a human, the AI passes the Turing test. In 1966, just 16 years after Turing's hypothesis, Joseph Weizenbaum developed the first program that almost passed this test. Let's also build a virtual psychologist in the next few minutes. What do we need? First, we need a language model that we can interact with. For simplicity, I'll use GPT, but feel free to substitute it with any other local language model. Then we need a well-crafted system prompt to imbue the language model with some personality. For our simple memory solution, we need a basic list where we'll store the entire conversation. We will then include this list with every request as the context. To enhance the solution, we could limit the stored messages to only the last 100 or so. For the long-term memory solution, we actually need a vector store. Rather than filling the context window with all of memory, which uses up valuable space, we retrieve individual memories into the context as needed. Since the information is stored permanently, the system can recall it indefinitely. OK, enough theory. Let's get our hands dirty. First, we need an API key. For this, we sign in at openai.com, navigate to the API section, and then to the API keys tab. Next, we create a new secret key. This can be used to connect to OpenAI via the API, allowing interaction with models such as GPT 3.5. We copy this key for later use. First, however, we'll set up a virtual environment to neatly separate dependencies and install the OpenAI package. Then, we create a new file named app.py and import OpenAI from the OpenAI library. We create a new client and enable the user to enter prompts directly through the command line. Subsequently, we construct a message array. This will have a system role, you are a helpful assistant, and also receive a user prompt. We use the content we previously obtained from the user. To interact with GPT models via OpenAI's API, we utilize the chat completion method. First, we invoke the create method with two parameters, the model and the messages list. We select GPT 3.5 Turbo as our model due to its speed and cost effectiveness. The second parameter is the list of messages we intend to process. To access the actual content of the response, we need to navigate to the first element in the choices array and then to its messages and their content. Let's print this information to see the output. We test it immediately 
but we receive an error message indicating that the OpenAI key is not set. We export this key by pasting it from the clipboard. We try again and enter the prompt to tell a joke. We see that the joke is delivered perfectly. So far, so good. Next, we want to modify our standard system prompt. Instead of the helpful assistant, it should behave like a psychological chatbot. We test it by saying hi, and we receive a typical psychologist response asking how we are feeling today. Now, we want to enable not just one question, but a continuous dialogue. So we encapsulate everything within a while true loop. This means that the instructions will loop indefinitely. Let's collect the user's prompt in each iteration of the loop. To ensure that the chatbot doesn't forget the conversation and can maintain a continuous dialogue where it can access all past messages, we need to store both the user messages and the chatbot responses in some way. We create a new method called addMessages, which takes a role and content as parameters. Then, we add the current message to the message list, setting the role and content accordingly. This means that with each loop iteration, the message list grows by two entries. Now, we can start by saving the user's input with add messages. Next, we want to save the messages from the chatbot, that is, from the assistant, so that we can continuously input them back into the check completion while the program is running. OK, we no longer need the initial prompt. Let's also remove the user role part from the initial messages list. Now let's test it out. We say hi and the response looks good. We reply that we are doing well and we see that our virtual psychologist responds to our answers and continues the conversation. And here it truly feels as if we are speaking with a real person. Next, we want the chatbot's output to actually be spoken aloud. For this purpose, we employ DeepGram. We will implement code that incorporates a text-to-speech method, utilizing the DeepGram SDK to vocalize the text in a specific voice. To start, we'll go to the DeepGram homepage, where you can sign up or log in easily with a Gmail address or by creating a free account. Once signed up, you'll receive credits worth $200. Next, I'll navigate to the documentation specifically to the Getting Started guide under the text-to-speech section. Here, you'll find a sample Python code snippet for converting text-to-speech using the DeepGram SDK. I built upon this code as a foundation and made some minor modifications. You can find the updated source code in the download section. I encapsulated the code in a method named text-to-speech that takes text as a parameter. This method utilizes the DeepGram client, and we authenticate using the DeepGram API key, which is set as an environment variable. We specify a DeepGram voice called Oro Hero N for the speech output. Ultimately, the method returns the file name of the generated sound file. Next, we need to install the DeepGram SDK, and after this, we can import our new method into our app.py. Let's use our newly created method to convert the GPT response into a sound file. The only thing left to do now is to play the sound file to the user. For this, we use the play sound method from the play sound library. Let's install it first. All right, let's give it a try. Oops, we made a mistake. We need to specify the DeepGram credentials meaning the API key. We try again. We receive another error message indicating that we cannot call PlaySound directly, but we should indeed use the PlaySound method from the PlaySound library. For this, we need to adjust our import to include PlaySound, meaning there is a PlaySound method in the PlaySound library. We try again.
Hello, how are you today? That's great to hear. What made your day good? That's wonderful. What do you enjoy doing in nice weather? That's fantastic. Running can be such a great way to enjoy the nice weather and stay active. Do you have a favorite route or trail that you like to run on? Okay, that was quite impressive. Now let's create a minimalistic proof of concept for long-term memory. Implementing a long-term memory with a vector store is very hard. Luckily for us, there is already a solution out there. Autogen teachable agents are exactly billed for this use case. They enable long-term memory across chat boundaries implemented using a vector store. Let's follow the steps one by one. We'll start by installing the PyAutogen teachable library. For this, simply click on Copy. Before installing the library, we'll create a virtual environment to isolate the dependencies. After activating it, we'll proceed to install the library. Next, we create a new file named app.py. Let's switch back to the Autogen website and copy the next section. This section handles the import of the necessary agents. Now we copy the configurations. The next part will create the actual agents, such as the teachable agent and the user proxy agent. The last part involves initiating the chat. OK, let's try it out. We received an error message indicating that the OAI config list file is missing. This file is responsible for setting the API key and listing the available models, such as GPT-4. We try it again. OK, it's prompting us to set the autogen use Docker to false if we prefer not to use Docker. Now it looks good and we can start a conversation. The agent is asking how it can assist, and I'd like to start with a joke. There it is. Let's ask him, who are you? He identifies as an AI assistant. Next, we need to tell him he's Eliza and a psychotherapist. To do this, we must modify the system message. Before we proceed, I'll delete the vector store so that we can start fresh. We'll update the teachable agent system message using the same system prompt as before. OK, let's restart Autogen and ask again who he is. Great, it's Eliza. Now let me introduce myself. OK, Eliza asks me, what's bringing you here today? I'll respond that I want to tell her about my running hobby. OK, let's stop the program. I'll restart it and check if Eliza has retained our previous communication. I'll ask her if she still remembers my name. Of course she does. OK, I'll tell her that I got hurt today. I'm curious to see if she can deduce that it was from running. OK, she remembers that I enjoy running. I'd say she's on her way to passing the Turing test. 